I just want to talk you through a little bit and give you an opportunity to actually feedback and comment as we go um, ar around leadership and what your understanding of leadership is and what sort of leadership works. We're in very, very difficult times at the moment and it takes a particular type of leader or a particular set of competencies or skills to help people navigate their way through these very, very trying times. Uh, and whether you are yourself a leader or whether you are being led by someone in your organization, um, the chances are we're, we're all looking for very similar things from our leaders at the moment. And I would suggest that what we're looking for is a balanced approach to leadership. And that's what I want to share with you today. So uh, unfortunately, because we're in lockdown, yeah, you're probably on your own in your rooms and offices, because otherwise I might have said, find a partner and, and let's just do a bit of a warm up. Um, but I, I don't know whether we can do that today, sadly. Yeah. I, I would have gone for it. I would have tried it out. But anyway, so so we'll skip we'll skip the warm up. And I just want to ask you or some questions really about your experience of leadership and your attitudes to leadership. And you know, use the chat box to just scribble freely anything that you think is relevant here. But what are the specific qualities, the the attitudes, the behaviors, the actions, the qualities, the competencies? that you particularly admire in leaders uh, and whether they are political leaders or, or business leaders. And separately to that, although you know, it may be the same, it may be the same list, what, what are the qualities that you think are particularly important for leaders to demonstrate at this particular point in the 21st century? Um, very unique and, and trying circumstances at the moment. So it'd just be interesting to see uh, what, your, what your thoughts would be about that. Okay, oh, interesting, yeah, oh, lovely, yeah. Authenticity, I, it's just such a wonderful word that, grateful. <laughs> oh yes, ah, this was your gratitude earlier on, Manjula. Honesty, authentic, innovation, empathy, care, good judgment, yeah. Okay, understanding, a people person. Okay, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, a uniter. Desperately need a bit of that at the moment, don't we? Um, you know, th these, these, are, these are great. You know, th these are things that absolutely are going to be very important to us all now, today, as we live through what we're living through. But even beyond that, actually, this is the direction global leadership is going in uh, to be more caring to be more understanding to be more compassionate less about the figures more about the people um, judgment is critical but what we're seeing uh, is a mismatch in some of our uh, countries and in some of our uh, governments and leadership uh, between what we inherently need and want and um, value and what we're actually seeing in terms of some of the behaviors uh, of some of our popular leaders. Uh, popular, I use the word loosely at the moment. Okay, so what what you've identified probably with, with a bit of waiting in one direction or another is, uh, is likely to be able to fall into any one of these four categories. And this is what I call leadership in four dimensions. And ultimately, we want to engage with leaders who are authentic, who are real, who are fully formed, uh, who are balanced in the way that they operate. And that means that we want them to have a good head on them. You know, we want them to have a reasonable degree of intellect, of thoughtfulness or ability to be able to think things through and to imagine things. We desperately need them to have some heart. We need them to care about us. I can see care up there and empathy. We need that. We need them to show that they understand us and care about that. Some people do are very good at apparently understanding us and keying into our emotions, but that doesn't necessarily mean they care. Uh, we want people who care about us. 
We also want the hand. We want people to lend a hand. We want people to help. We want people to support us. We want people to raise us up when we fall down, uh, when we we lose hope or when we f fall into despair. We want people to to get involved, to, to come down and walk in our shoes. And we also need uh, them to engage the hoof. So we want them to to inject a bit of pace and energy and drive uh, and again provide that sort of motivating force so we need our leaders to display elements of all four head heart hand and hoof um, and what that fundamentally means in simple terms is we want them to explain to us what they're thinking and we want them to explain it to us in in terms that reassure us that it has actually been thought out and it's a, a well-reasoned uh, proposition that they're putting uh, in front of us. And we also want them to show that they care about us and that the decisions they're making about us are in our best interests. We want them to walk with us. We don't want them to say, you go off and do, do what I say uh, and I'll go off and do something different, which is you know, part of the problem that we're experiencing at the moment in the country. Uh, but we want them to walk with us. We want them to be with us. And also we want them to lend a hand and we want them to show us and help us show us by doing, show us by getting involved, by utilizing their skills and practical capabilities to help us uh, get, get through this situation. So when you reflect back on some of the things that you added in your list around empathy, innovation, and creativities in there, being authentic, honesty, um, when you think, reflect back, where are you predominantly placing your own personal requirements of leadership at the moment? Perhaps you could just uh, answer that in the chat box. Where, where are they predominantly sitting? Are they sitting more with head or with heart or with hoof or hand? Just write into the chat box. Which of those tend to be most significant for you personally in your assessment of what makes up good leadership? It was a running theme, right? A running theme on, theme on hand. We want people to lend a hand, be involved, not remote. But heart is coming up twice. Um, no, uh, heart is once actually, and we've had a we've had head. Okay, um, and and you know this will this will change. What we would need from our leaders will change according to the specific nature of the circumstances that we're living through. Right now, we probably need a bit more compassion. Right now, we need clear thinking. Right now, we need people demonstrating that they're with us. And that will change. And that's why our leaders need to have the ability to flex and to, to know when, when is it they need to engage the heart? When is it they need to engage the head? So just looking at some examples of the things that uh, you know, relate to each of these, walking with us, that's about providing that direction, that focus and that energy and setting a pace to a certain extent, particularly when people are starting to lose hope. The heart is very much about caring, about being encouraging, about being fun and trustworthiness is key within that. Explaining to us, we want them to explain in terms that we can understand and that are very clear to us. We want to see and recognize that they've actually thought it through they've got a strategy they've got a plan they've got some tactics it makes sense that the data that they're operating on is sound and it's been well considered uh, and in terms of uh, the hand well we want pragmatic solutions and um, we want some reliability and we want them to demonstrate real competence uh, and ability to work with us the trouble is that not every leader excels in all of these four areas. And so their ability to shift from one to the other is often compromised and that can create significant problems. And what I call this is disembodied leadership. When a leader has a particular focus, they're drawn to one of those areas more than another. Uh, there was uh, Ken Robinson was an educationalist and during one of his TED talks I remember he he spoke about 
academics and he said the only the only reason why academics need a body is because they need something to rest their giant heads on which i thought was quite funny yeah because it's all head it's all head it's all, it's all absolutely absorbing lots of information and analysis but but losing sight of well how does this relate to real people and uh, how do i turn this into sort of practical applications so put academics to one side we don't want that replicated amongst our leadership uh, because then it just doesn't make sense it's incongruous the way they're operating it doesn't seem authentic they don't seem to care about us and we desperately need people to care about us we need them to be uh, uh, using their intellect and to have an intellect uh, and we need them to be engaging with us and setting the pace uh, uh, a study that came out very, very recently in 2020 in the in the MIT uh, Sloan Management Review was, you know, what is it people need from their leaders in times of crisis? And these were three things that came out. And, and I've just had added next to it that these very much relate to the, the 4D model of leadership, that to being kept informed and updated is is, is, is absolutely the head. We need information. We need clarity to be kept focused and on track. Well, that's about hoof that's about direction that's about providing that energy but it's also about walking with us and giving us a hand as we we go through that and also to feel that we're being seen and heard um, we need to feel that people are actually listening to us they care about our opinions they care about our pain and that's why this, we need leaders to show absolutely that they care about us and that they're going to treat us like humans uh, I came across a quote uh, some time ago. I have no idea where, who, who, who it, I, I can't claim um, rights over it, uh, although I wish I could because I love it. And it's this, people won't care what you know until they know that you care. And it's getting that balance. You can be the most brilliant person with the most brilliant brain and the most brilliant mind. But if all you're doing is, is churning out facts and data and detail, but with no sense of the impact of that on the individual, people aren't going to bother. But if they genuinely believe you care about them and that you are authentic and you are compassionate, then they're going to engage with what you know. So it's not enough just to be a brilliant brain. Uh, you need much more than that. And that brings me on to uh, another interesting um, study that was done a few years ago now, where uh, a number of employees were asked, what are the things that are most important to you in terms of your leaders, the, the sort of qualities you most admire from your leaders and, and need from them? Uh, and they came up with a list of 12. And I just wondered if, I, again, writing into the chat box, which one would you think people put as the number one right at the top, which one? I'm not gonna ask you to sort all 12 into, into the order, but of all of these, which of, which of them do you think employees at that time put right at the top? Manjula's right in there with trust. Hey, we've got a good communicator, inspiration. Yeah, motivational, good communicator. This is great, yeah. Trust's coming out again. Okay, so there is, there is a bit of a theme. Okay, now not all of you are as old as I am, so you may not remember the reference on this slide to the Morecambe and Wise, but this is, this is Andre Previn appearing on the Morecambe and Wise show, trying to conduct uh, the... Um, uh, Grieg piano concerto and Eric Morecambe is making a complete hash of it and when Andre Previn uh, uh, confronts him Eric Morecambe grabs him by the lapels and says I'm playing all the right notes not necessarily in the right order um, so I'm going to put them in the right order for you based on the responses from employees and very interesting to see uh, that communicator and trust right up there. Absolutely essential. The number one. Whereas when you look down at the bottom, risk taker, entrepreneurial, charismatic, we don't really want that. 
it's okay to be charismatic if you've got all the other things as well but actually we're qu we're quite drawn to quiet leaders uh, we're drawn to the notion of servant leaderships people who put themselves at our disposal who put themselves out for us in fact so trust is absolutely critical in uh, uh, developing a positive impact and encouraging people to follow you. And there's an interesting uh, equation related to trust, which is this, the trust equation. And within the trust equation, uh, I'll see it's, um, my slideshow's gone again. So um, let me just um, start from here. Is it going to? Oh. Apologies. So the trust equation. So what the trust equation says, and you can look it up. There's some, uh, you can say you can see at the bottom of the slide who who came up with this. But in order to develop trust, there are certain things that have to be in place, according to this equation. And the first thing is credibility. You have to demonstrate you know what you're talking about. So this is very much the head. You have to demonstrate that you are qualified to have the opinion that you have and that you've done your research. And with credibility means that you keep on learning. It's not that you learned once 20 years ago and you never picked up another book since then and you're still basing on old information. You've got to keep that learning alive to remain credible. So people think, oh, you're worth listening to. That's the first thing. Well, maybe not the first thing, but it's a significant thing. The, the next one is reliability. Uh, you know, you think about all the people you've fallen out with over the time and people that, you know, you used to trust, but then that trust was broken. And a lot of it was down to the fact they kept promising things, but then never, never came through on the promises. So if you're going to promise something, you have to absolutely deliver against it. And if there's any um, suggestion you might not be able to, then you need to inform people immediately and come up with some sort of a, a plan for how you're going to get around that. But keep people informed, be reliable. The third element is called intimacy. And what this really means is the ability to be able to talk freely and very openly, very confidentially about stuff that matters. And that, that when you share that information, about yourself and some of that might be showing your own vulnerability that you know with absolute certainty that it's going nowhere else it is a confidential conversation so as a leader you are open to being exposed you are open to being vulnerable and talking about quite difficult subjects and sharing information that people need rather than keeping it to yourself but also as as an employee working for that leader that you absolutely trust that you could talk to that person about anything and it's not going anywhere so with the trust equation we need c r and i what we need a lot less of is self-interest. So although we all have self-interest, we have goals that we're aspiring to, we have things we want to achieve. Actually, we need to play down our own self-interest if we want people to trust us. So we need to demonstrate that we're prepared to park our own interests in order to serve the interests of them. And if we do that, that is going to generate significant, significant trust. Whereas you could find yourself in a situation where someone deploys their own self-interest and it completely destroys the relationship. So I might have been involved with another colleague working on a particular project that went belly up. And because my self-interest takes over, I remove myself from the situation and I say, oh, no, I wasn't really involved in that. You, you want to talk about to Jeff about that because that, that was really Jeff. Yeah. Uh, that's because my self-interest is getting in the way. Jeff's never ever going to trust me. You know, he thought he thought I was watching his back. He thought I was with him. Uh, and suddenly I've thrown him to the lions. So we need to downplay our self-interest and we need to boost credibility, reliability and intimacy. And the reality is that if we do not create a climate of trust, what we end up with is a climate of crisis. 
where nobody really knows what's going on. It's chaotic. Nobody shares information. Nobody makes decisions. And that's the last thing that we need right now. We need people to be coming forward with information. We need people to be feeling that they can speak freely without um, fear of retribution. So I'm coming to the, to the end now, but I just thought it was useful to try and wrap up some of the things that I've taken away from all of these various studies and about how to provide balanced leadership. And I, I sum them up uh, uh, as what I call the seven C's of balanced leadership, which as leaders, it's really important that you take steps to ensure that you are communicating regularly and effectively with people and providing a good context for your thinking. So rather than just announcing decisions that you've made, give them the context, give them the rationale. It's really important to connect with people at an emotional level, not just at an intellectual level. Uh, and also to consult with people, to involve them, to, to find out what they're thinking rather than just rely on your own knowledge, which may be very biased. Um, a level of consistency that doesn't mean you never change your mind but it comes back to that notion of authenticity treat people with compassion and work to to guarantee your credibility it can be very easily lost so keep learning keep fresh keep your knowledge alive keep checking your facts keep checking your the basis of your thinking because otherwise you lose credibility and I, I was listening to uh, uh, an interview recently with Margaret Hefferman, uh, and, and she, she advised an, uh, an eighth C, which is leaders as conveners, because the best leaders are the ones that surround themselves with really smart people, uh, people with different opinions, different attitudes, diff access to different information. And not only do they gather them around them, they listen to them. They don't ignore them. They don't dismiss them. So by all means, gather smart people around you, but make sure you listen to them. Uh, and if you find that you are actually the smartest person in the room, it's probably time to leave and go and find some other people who are smarter than you. That was uh, uh, reflected in a quote from a, one of my favorite LinkedIn sites, uh, which uh, I definitely recommend called The Female Lead, if any of you have not come across it before, but definitely follow them. They post some incredible stuff. Uh, uh, and that seemed to sum up uh, what, uh, what I've been talking about here. So that's my thoughts on balanced leadership. Um, trust, absolutely essential. Uh, that's about building those connections and, and relationships with people and showing that you care. But it's also about having the intellect. It's about getting involved and it's about providing motivation, focus and energy to help people through. So thank you very much, all of you, for listening. And I'm, and, um, uh, I'm very open for any, any questions, any random questions, any, any thoughts that you might want to share as a result of that. It's been really interesting all of us and um, we're very grateful for you for giving up your time to join us this afternoon thank you thank you very much everybody lovely to see you all take no. care thank you tim bye